What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But before we jump into this review for the weekend's new album called After Hours, I just wanted to say very quickly that I am going to start streaming on Twitch. This is something that I've talked to you guys about for quite a while now. I've had plenty of requests to get up there and start playing games because I make plenty of game references in my reviews. I've talked about it on the old podcast I used to do and other things like that. So I figured now would be a good time to do that. I got a camera coming on the way. I got some ideas for games, probably a lot of RPGs and stuff like that so I'll put the link to my channel here and then hopefully in a couple of days I can get that stream up and running so stay tuned for that but now we are going to talk about this weekend album which I did say was called After Hours and if you're not familiar with The Weeknd he is a singer songwriter and producer who's coming out of Toronto Canada who's made a lot of waves especially with some of his earlier mixtapes those three mixtapes went on to become Trilogy those early works of his are still beloved by many of his fans and of course he's had quite a bit of success with his studio albums quite a bit I'm saying that being modest he's had a lot of success I think Beauty Behind the Madness was a great project I really did enjoy that and of course Starboy did really great as well that shit was all over the radio he does do that poppy sound that really sticks with a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds he makes catchy music and you are going to get that same sort of flavor here although he is doing something a little bit different because this shit is so 80s man I really like the sound and aesthetic that he went with here because I've long been a fan of 80s music I got a soft spot for that I love synth pop I love new retro wave I like all of that stuff with those classic sounding synths so I really like the sound that he was going for on here and of course you are still going to get the usual stuff from the weekend I'm talking about those atmospheric vibes and the hedonistic content that has to do with drinking drugging partying sexing heartbreak girls doing you wrong you doing girls wrong doing blow off a mirror at night because you're sad about some shit that's the type of stuff that the weekend gets into and it really does seem to relate to a lot of people in one way or another especially if you were a partier in the past or maybe you're younger and you're still out there partying so as much as he does do that poppy music that a lot of people know him for on the radio and on video channels he also does some shit that's pretty grimy and dirty and dark and underhanded when you really listen to those lyrics man he really does get into some shit so I really find him interesting as an artist I wouldn't say he's one of my personal favorites but I always do come out of his projects enjoying some tracks and it's the same thing here so right out of the gate that single blinding lights it instantly struck me it is just pure 80s because you're getting starry keys bouncy drums and hand claps and the song in your eyes is in that same vein it has these glitzy synths and some glorious saxophone on the end that sounds like it could have been on a fucking 90s sitcom I know I said this is mostly in those 80s vibes but every time I hear saxophone that's what I think of man I either think of like a sexy softcore porno scene that you'd see on the movie network back in the day or just some of that classic 90s sitcom shit where everybody's turning and it's like <sighs> and then their name pops up you know how it goes if you came up in those days really did enjoy those tracks and even the spacey intro track called alone again sets the tone for this album because you're getting all these swirling synth effects some of which remind me of 80s italian horror i know that seems like kind of a weird abstract reference just these kind of dark unsettling synth effects so i really do like the vibe and aesthetic throughout this project really is something that's interesting and a little bit different from some of the stuff that you're going to hear out there today although again coming back to my love for new retro wave and all that type of stuff you might want to check out artists like robert parker if you really like this project because that's a name that comes to mind as someone who really is pushing forward the same type of sound man he does it really well now to keep moving forward here i do appreciate the love and heartbreak content that you are going to get on this project but some of my least favorite moments have to do with that in particular i'm talking about scared to live where a weekend is asking a woman to move on and keep loving even though he did her wrong it's not that it's a horrendously bad track but it's just kind of slow typical plotting i understand why he would put this on here because it is a bit different and some people like those ballad tracks but in this track listing i just really prefer the more upbeat bouncy 80s bangers that we're getting on here you might even notice on this track that there are some phil collins type of drums man you'll know what i'm talking about when you check this out really sounds like that shit that doom 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 of course you hear that you think of mike tyson in the hangover and of course classic phil collins genesis all that type of shit so i thought it was kind of cool how it had that in there but i didn't really love this song i thought hardest to love you know this one's much better it does kind of have a ballad feel to it and some sappy content but i appreciated this because the bouncy drums have a bit of a uk garage feel to it and you're going to get that same type of percussion on too late which is one of my favorite tracks i love the way the drums bop along on this man it instantly gets you bopping and the line that stuck out to me on this song is when he sings we're in hell it's disguised as a paradise with flashing lights i just thought that was a very cool way to describe what
what it's like when you're in a bad place, but you're also living that high life. You're stuck in the limelight. It's disguised as a paradise because some people might think, wow, you've got it made. You've got all these things going on, but then you have that pressure. You have that constant eye on you, which can bring about a lot of different problems. So I thought that was a really cool line. And you do get this type of content throughout this project, just like with a lot of weekend projects. I find whenever you listen to his music, it does have that kind of gloomy, sort of depressing undertone to it. While he does also sing about this lifestyle that he leads, man. He's just very open and honest about this lifestyle, all the good things and bad things that can come with it, which is echoed in the song called Escape from LA. This is a very hazy track where he's singing about LA and just how he's got to escape out of there because that fast lifestyle can tear you apart. It can ruin relationships and get you caught up in all kinds of stuff. Really did appreciate this track. And some lines that stuck out to me on here are the ones when he's singing about this girl who he's pumping in the studio. And even though she's cold hearted, he cannot leave her because the throat is too fire. So very clearly, this girl must have that double fisted gok 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 like Tiana Trump has. I'm talking about the two hands working on that shit like a long ass pepper grinder slobbering all over that thing like a goddamn turkey neck at Thanksgiving. She's going crazy on it. So you know what? I understand, man. She might have a cold heart, but the throat is fire, so he keeps coming back. Now, to keep more of the hedonism flowing, we get the song Heartless. This is just an all-out banger from Metro Boomin. I love this shit. It is just ignorant and thumping. And you do get some pretty cheesy lines on here, like when he's turning pussies to faucets and running through so much pussy he needs a dog pound. You know, you get some of that shit on here, but it doesn't matter because the bass on this is just thicker than Ariana Adin. It is thicker than Nina Stax and Simone Richards, just to throw out a couple of names out there, you know, I kind of reference some of these same names over and over. Maybe I'm giving you guys too much information, but hey, it is what it is. We're going to keep things moving with another track I like called Repeat After Me. This one is an interlude, but it doesn't really feel like it to me because it is kind of a full length track. Very hypnotic and hazy feel, which works perfectly with the idea of this song because The weekend is practically waving a pendant in front of a girl like a goddamn hypno talking about the Pokemon as he's saying to her over and over, you don't love that guy. If you're thinking of me, it doesn't matter if you're fucking him. He says these types of things over and over just to really get it in her head that he is still the one for her. I thought this was a cool track. Love the hazy vibe of it. And Save Your Tears is another mega 80s track. You're getting those hot synths, all kinds of that 80s style hand clapping throughout there as The weekend sings about the cycle of bitterness and heartbreak and how it can just be cyclical, man. It goes on and on. You pass it on to someone else because he says, yeah, I broke your heart like someone did to mine. You know, that's how it happens to us, man. Sometimes we get done so dirty, we get heartbroken that we just get bitter and we get in that vicious cycle, man. We turn to a savage and we start doing the shit to other people. It ain't right, but it makes you feel good just to turn into a goddamn monster, man, like a fucking werewolf out there or a goddamn Frankenstein or something like that been there before many many years ago i'm not there now because i'm washed up and married with kids you know sometimes that happens too so it is what it is liked these tracks and i thought snow child was probably the most in-depth and heartfelt track on here on this one he's really detailing his rise to stardom from when he was this teenager who was going in and out of bouts of homelessness coming up hard having suicidal thoughts and eventually he made it into being the mega star he is today very spacey backdrop on here love that beat and i really love this album man so overall I'm going to go with an 8.5 out of 10. There's not much here in the way of filler. And I also think it's impressive that he did this whole damn thing with no features on it. You don't get bored of it, man. Sometimes when an artist does this shit where they have no features, they can't really hold it down. You're like starting to fall asleep because you want something to switch up and be mixed up. But I thought his performances on all these tracks were great. The production throughout is just hot. The topics and overall vibes, as I said, are on that usual weekend type of shit. The title track in particular is on that and it really reminded me of that vintage weekend. So I think his fans will really appreciate the title track after hours. But yeah, man, overall, I thought this was a very refreshing project. Love that 80s styles production, catchy vocals, great vocals. Now I'm just repeating myself because I'm at the outro, but hey, let me know down below what you guys think about this one. Hopefully you'll check out my Twitch channel. I'm going to get that up and running because I think that'll be a good opportunity for me to talk to you guys. If you have any questions about what music I'm listening to, what I feel about this and that, do I have any lists? We don't have to just even talk about music. We can talk about whatever. Of course, the gameplay will be there as well to hold things down. But I thought this would be a good way for me to reach my audience and just talk about some other stuff as well. So check that out. That should be up and running within a couple of days, maybe more like a week. It depends on when the rest of my equipment gets here and I 
I guess, setup. There we go. Make sure you do that good YouTube and social media stuff where you show me love and you show me lots of it. The YouTube channel is not going to slow down because I'm doing the Twitch. That's just going to be another side thing I got going on just to throw that out there. But yeah, let me know down below what you think. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.